Hi everyone, it's Eleanor from Art with Eleanor and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint the moon realistically using acrylic paints. To start this painting off, I went in with black acrylic paint to create the background. For me, this took a few layers to get it as opaque as I wanted it, as the canvas board I used was a bright white colour. I've chosen to use canvas board for the first time for this painting. The reason behind this is that it will easily fit into a normal frame once I am finished with the painting, rather than me having to get a frame specifically designed for a thicker canvas. But, of course, you are welcome to do this on any surface you want. To create the circle in the centre of the canvas, I used a compass with a white pencil in it. As you can see, I made sure to centre the point of the compass by measuring out the length and width of the canvas to find the centre. I also just wanted to mention that I'm working on a 4x7 inch canvas today, so this artwork isn't huge and you might need some quite small paintbrushes to do the detail work. Anyway, I then filled in the circle using a mid-grey tone. The whole of this painting is completed using just white and black acrylic paint, mixed in different parts to create the tonal variation of this piece. This also means that this is a monochrome study. Personally, I find monochrome studies really useful for developing your art skills and techniques, as you do not have to worry about getting the right colour, you only have to worry about getting the right tones and shades. The next step was to start blocking in the darkest areas of the moon. For me, I wanted to test my painting accuracy by not doing a sketch of the shapes and outlines before. But if you're just beginning to learn about using acrylic paints, I would suggest using the transfer technique to get the basic shapes onto the canvas before going in with your darker tones. If you haven't heard of the transfer technique before, I explain it fully in my realistic cloud painting tutorial, so I'll leave a link to it in the card or the description below. Once I had gotten the darker shapes mapped out, I went back in with the mid-tone colour to start blending out those shapes and create a smooth transition of colours. I find the easiest way to blend out acrylic paint is to use a combination of the wet and wet technique as well as working back and forth between the two shades I want to blend together. You'll see that throughout this painting process I will keep going back in with black acrylic paint and sharpening the edge of the circle as I found it really difficult to keep it looking as sharp and as crisp as I wanted. Now that I had gotten the basic shapes blocked out I wanted to bump up the contrast of the dark parts of the moon. I noticed that, in my reference photo, the left hand edge of the moon almost blended into the dark black of the sky, so I mixed up the darkest grey I could and started filling in the edge. Something I have learnt recently is that in a monochrome study, generally, the higher the contrast of the different tones, the more realistic the painting or drawing will look. Again, after adding these darker tones, we are then blending out the edges to create a softer transition which mimics that of the surface of the moon. I'm also beginning to block out areas which are lighter in tones, as well as where some of the finer details might end up. To do this, I'm using a mixture of white acrylic paint and a very light grey acrylic paint. One thing I have really been enjoying about using acrylic paint is how easy it is to correct any mistake you might make. This is because acrylic paints have a very high opacity, so you are able to layer lighter colours over darker colours and vice versa, which gives a lot of flexibility to your painting style. Another tip I would give to anyone who is just starting to learn how to paint realistically is to have a clear reference photo which is the same size as your painting if that's possible. This means you are easily able to compare the size of different shapes in your painting to your reference photo to see how accurate they are. The setup I had for this painting was to prop my reference photo up directly in front of me, just behind where I was painting. This allowed me to be constantly flitting my eyes back and forth from my reference photo to my painting so I didn't miss any small detail or get the colours or shapes wrong. Whilst I'm still working on getting the shapes how I want them and blending them out, I just wanted to take a moment to ask you guys to like this video if you are enjoying it so far. And if you find my art tips helpful, then it would really help me out if you could subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video.
At this point, I am looking at trying to refine the shapes I have gotten down, as well as starting to experiment with different shapes and textures I can use to add detail. Using acrylics when doing a monochrome study is really helpful for when you want to add more texture because of the thickness of the paint. Often, someone who is just starting to use acrylic paint will overlook adding in texture to their painting, as they may think that having something completely smooth will make it look more realistic. Personally, I believe that adding in texture really elevates a piece, especially in a monochrome study, where your palette is somewhat limited. For this piece in particular, the surface of the moon is far from being flat, as there are lots of craters, as well as peaks and valleys. If you are scared to experiment with texture straight onto your painting, then I would suggest using a bit of scrap paper and having a play around with what textures you think might work in this painting. Another tip I wanted to add was try not to get too caught up on how realistic the painting looks. I know this might sound a bit strange, but if you let yourself have some artistic freedom and let go of the perfectionist side of you, you are more likely to come out with a piece you are happy with that might even look more realistic. This is because you have been able to think of the piece as a whole, rather than just focusing your attention on one section of the piece. Something I find really helpful when I'm starting to get caught up in a perfectionist cycle is just walk away from the artwork and do something else for an hour or so, such as go for a walk, chat to friends or family. This allows you to reset your mind and come back to the painting with a fresh set of eyes ready to work on it as a whole rather than focusing so much on the minute details of the piece. At this point in the painting process, I am starting to turn my attention to adding in some of the highlights of the moon and its craters. As you can see, I've tried filming a bit with my palette in frame, just so you guys can get an idea of the different shades of grey I've been using for the majority of this painting. But yeah, excuse the state of my palette, apparently I'm not capable of cleaning off the paint. Another slightly messy thing about this part of the painting process was that I found using my finger to smudge and therefore dim some of the bright white dots I had added in really helped to enhance the texture of the painting in those areas. Of course this is completely optional as you can get the same effect using a dry paintbrush. I just found this the easiest and quickest method for me to get the effect I wanted. I also just wanted to say that I am selling this original piece on my Etsy which has the same shop name as my YouTube channel, Art with Eleanor. So, if you did want to get your hands on any of my original artwork, be sure to check it out as each piece is one of a kind. I'll leave a link to it in my description below, as well as my Instagram and Facebook. The final steps to this painting include adding in the long white stripes across the moon, as well as more dots and craters. The easiest way to do this is to use a very small paintbrush, if you do not own a small enough paintbrush, you can always modify an old paintbrush by cutting off some of the bristles to make it smaller. To give the effect that the moon is a sphere, make sure that the long white stripes curve around the moon's surface. This will help make your artwork look more realistic, as the moon is not two-dimensional. I also spent more time at the end working on the top right hand corner of the moon, as for some reason I had neglected this part when adding in the details. For this area in particular, I found it really helpful to use darker tones to create texture within the craters themselves. There were also quite a lot of little white dots on these craters, mostly focused around the edges. As I said before, make sure you are going back to your reference photo frequently to ensure you are adding the details in accurately rather than just adding them in where you think they should go. The very last step was to go back in with the black acrylic paint and sharpen the circle edge once again. To make sure I had got the circle as accurate as possible, I used the compass again and took my time painting this in. 
This is a very important last step, as the moon doesn't have a wobbly line around it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today, and that you find it helpful for improving your own acrylic paintings. If you do give this video a go, then please do let me know in the comments below, or tag me on my Instagram, at artwitheleanor. I'd love to see what you create. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like, and subscribe for more art content like this.